Ladies and gentlemen, g'day, g'day, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Economics Mate, and welcome to another video here in World of Tanks Blitz. And if you're new here, thank you so much for dropping by, and consider subscribing and leaving a comment down below, letting me know whether you would like it or not to see something else. Perhaps you'd like to see a specific video. Let me know in the comments. Perhaps I'll make it when I have a chance. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to be talking about one of the most crucial skills that you need to know in World of Tanks Blitz, and that is, of course, being tank aware. Now, for some of you out there who may be asking, what do you mean by tank awareness? Well, it's very, very simple. You need to know what kind of tanks your team is playing with, what, time, what kind of tanks the enemy team is playing with, and what kind of tank that you're playing with. If you decide to go out in a tank destroyer, you need to play the role of a tank destroyer. If you're going out in a heavy tank, you need to play the role of a heavy tank. If you're going out in a medium, you need to play the role of a medium tank. And of course, if you're going out in a light tank, well, most light tanks are used as scouts and to spot the enemy team and of course, flank them. So it's very important that you know what kind of tank that you're gonna be taking out into battle and of course, how to use it. Of course, there are specific ways of how to play specific tanks, like for instance, the Grille 15. Yes, it is a tank destroyer, but it doesn't have any armor. So you need to play it in a very sneaky position, peek a boom, and pick your targets in a way where you're not going to be spotted, but you can safely shoot them at a distance. But something like the Jagdpanzer E100, for instance, has a large amount of armor and it has a massive gun. So you can use that to your advantage to bounce a couple shots before you take before you shoot your gun yourself. And then there are tanks like, for instance, the uh, E100 or the Mouse, which have a ridiculous amount of armor and have a fairly decent gun, which means that you can use that as a battering ram or you can use it as basically going headfirst into the enemy team and making a difference and using your armor profile and not so much using a gun, but using your armor profile and angling and wiggling and jiggling, side scraping in order to basically entice the enemy tanks to shoot at you so you can make the under tanks on your team shoot them. So you basically use yourself as a protective wall, essentially. And then you have medium tanks, or and then there are other heavy tanks, I should probably add, like the uh, WZ-1115A, or the IS-7, or the IS-4, uh, or the, WZ, the WZ-113, or tanks like the BZ-75, for instance, or the uh, VZ-55. These tanks don't necessarily have an incredible amount of armor pro armor like, for instance, the E100 or the Mouse or the 60TP, but they have enough of an armor profile and they have a good amount of speed and they're low to, lower to the ground and they have a decent amount of gun depression so they can be more aggressive in the way they play, like they can, they can basically flank better, they can maneuver around better, they can be the ones where they support the super heavy tanks because they consider them heavy tanks. But let's say you drop down to lower tiers, like T7, and you play something like the Tiger 1, for instance. Well, the Tiger 1 is considered a heavy, not a heavy tank. Historically speaking, the Tiger 1 was, of course, a heavy tank. But in Blitz, the Tiger 1 has like 40 kilometers per hour going forward, like 35, 40 kilometers per hour going forwards, right? It's got a very accurate gun. It's got great penetration. It's basically a heavy medium tank, so you need to play it as such. You need to play it as a heavy medium tank. You can't play it as a heavy tank. You can side scrape, you can go hold down, you can face hug, you can flank. It's diverse in its play style. But something like, for example, a Tiger P is a lot heavier, it's more heavily armored. That is a tank that you play as a conventional heavy tank. And then you get tanks, for instance, like the FCM 50T, for instance, which is a tank that nobody talks about anymore because it's quite redundant in this day and age. Now the FCM 50T is a tank that is massive in size, barely has any armor, but guess what? It's a medium tank, so it does not have a light tank uh, camouflage rating, right? So you need to play it like a light tank, even though technically speaking, it's not a light tank. You can't really bounce much shells. You have decent gun depression. Your maneuverability is fairly decent, but it's not up to light tank standards. It drives like a heavy medium tank, even though it's a light medium tank. <laughs> So that is a tank, for instance, that you need to play and you need to diversify your playstyle in order to a, adapt to its environment and, and adapt to basically not get shot to, to death, essentially. And then you get tanks like, for instance, the T100LT, which is a T10 Russian light tank. That tank 
has a decent armor profile for a light tank. In fact, it has a pretty damn good armor profile for a light tank. Because it's so low, because it's so squashed, they call it a pancake. Right? It's got a fantastic... In fact, the gun on that thing is... <laughs> in no way, shape, or form. Needs to be as accurate as it is, but onwards and upwards. That, I think, in my opinion, it's between the WZ, which I'm going to talk about, by the way, WZ3, uh, WZ132-1, which I made a video on, and the T100LT. These two tanks, the T100LT technically has a better armor profile because it's more trollish, but you need to play it as a light tank. But you have the advantage of having that trollish armor profile, which means that you could bounce a lot more shots than you can in the WZ, for instance. With the WZ, you need to play it like a more medium tank, but at the same time, still play it as a light tank. But you need to play it more carefully so you don't get shot to smithereens, flank, spot. It's got the works. But then you got something like a Bat Chat, for instance, which is enormous for a light tank, but has good gun depression. It's got a three round clip. It's great. It's got mobility. It's got fantastic view range. It really is a great tank, but it has no armor. And you need to be careful with that, so you need to be very sneaky. Use your bushes, use your camouflage, use your binoculars if you've got it, like set binoculars rather than having camo net, and basically outspot the tank before they spot you, and use your team to your advantage and spot for them, because that tank is what that's what that tank is good for. And then you have tanks, for instance, like the um, E50M and the Leo 1. So the E50M is a prime example. The E50M is what's considered a heavy medium tank. It's a heavy M. It's got great mobility for what it is. It's got fantastic armor profile. It's got a magnificent gun. The E50M is going to be another tank I'm going to make a review on very, very soon. So stay tuned for that because it did get buffed in this update. And that tank, you need to play it like a heavy medium or like a light heavy tank, right? Side scrape, go hold down, wiggle and jiggle, face hug, the works. You can even flank in that tank, it's amazing. Then you got the Leo 1. Now the Leo 1 is very different. It has a fantastic gun. It's a laser beam of a gun, right? Great penetration, great mobility, great gun depression, great view range. But the one thing about the Leopard 1 is that it doesn't have any armor, which means you can easily get HE penned by a lot of those bigger caliber guns. So you need to play it in a more conservative manner. You need to not overexpose yourself. You need to take a snapshot quickly and get back into cover straight away before they hit you again. Very crucial in that play style. And that's the difference. Yes, it's a medium tank, but guess what? There's an E50M that's also a T10 that's also a medium tank, but that has a hell of a lot more armor. And it's played slightly different to the E to the Leopard 1. So Leopard 1, you need to play it more like a light tank than a medium tank. And then you have tanks, for instance, like the ISU-152, the SU-152, these tank destroyers, right? Or the WZ-111, or the WZ-111-4 GFT, or the WZ-113 um, GFT. These tanks, or the Object 704 is another one. These tanks have a massive gun mantlet. They don't necessarily have a lot of armor, aside from maybe the T9 and T10 uh, Russian, uh, sorry, uh, T9, T10 Chinese tank destroyers, right? But they have a huge gun mantlet, which you can use to your advantage in order to get them to shoot your gun mantlet instead of shooting your tank itself. So let's say you're in a predicament. You're in an ISU-152. There's a tank coming towards you. What you want to do is you want to go headfirst into them, right? Just make sure it's not a heavy tank because then you'll be stuffed. Headfirst into them, right? Again, make sure it's not a heavy tank, because <laughs> you will lose health. Stick your gun out. Stick your gun out where their gun is, and wiggle it around, so that way they're forced to shoot you in your gun, and then they'll hit your gun mantlet, and they won't pen, and it'll bounce, and then you have a chance to basically move back and fire your big ass out the shot. And that's it. It's all about knowing your tanks and knowing how to play in different play styles and knowing how to play. And then, of course, you've got to adapt your player style to how and what kind of tanks that your team has. You're going to be like, okay, well, there's like three in it. There's three heavy tanks in my team. I'm in a medium tank. There's a light tank on my team and there's a tank destroyer. I need to help my light tank spot because I'm in a medium, right, and flank around. I'm going to guide them be like, listen, I want you to go here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to guide you here. We're going to flank and we're going to spot these tanks. If the tanks we spot are on our side and the rest of our team is on that side, we're going to have to make our way back. We can't stay there. We can't hold the line. 
Same thing goes with, let's say, the enemy team. You say, okay, cool. I'm in a heavy tank. There's two other heavy tanks on my team. There's two tank destroyers. There's one light tank. On their team, they have two heavy tanks. They have three tank destroyers. And they have two medium tanks. What am I going to do? Well, I'm in a heavy tank. I'm going to push up. I'm in a super heavy, for instance. I'm going to act as a barricade. I'm going to force them to shoot me. And I'm going to bounce those shots so that my team can take shots and shoot them. And so we can win the match, right? Same thing with supremacy. If you're playing supremacy... Very important. Go and cap those bases. Don't just go in and try to fight. Cap the bases is very, very important. And ladies and gentlemen, there you go. That is it. A very crucial role, being very tank aware, understanding tank mechanics and how to play certain tanks. I will do a breakdown when I have time. I'm going to make a video on how to play certain tanks, but we'll see. But otherwise, that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next. And as always, look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching and a massive, massive thank you for all subscribing. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.